Hi, my name is Diana Pearl McNutt, and I'm here at the University of Reading Archaeology Department. And today I'm going to give a demonstration on how to do photogrammetry on very small objects, like brooches. With small objects, you need a high aperture, which means high light, to get very detailed texture. The only problem is with my objects is they're both tiny and shiny, as their brooches are. So I have to get a high amount of light, but not direct light, because that will cause reflections on the object, and the photogrammetry model will not come out. So I organized my setup in order to create this high level of diffused light. I have my light box here, and there's a light table underneath. I have a stand underneath my Lazy Stu Susan that is clear plastic and glass with the white on top so the light is diffused as it goes up. I also have a diffused light which rakes across the top. And I also have the ambient light on currently with these fluorescent lights which create an all-around light coming in from the sides. I have blacked out the back because having a strong backlight is actually very detrimental to getting some, some, some of the sharp edges around the object. For most photogrammetry projects, it is recommended that you do a single background, and it's the most common, but I have found actually doing newspaper as your background is quite good for small objects, and I'll discuss that more in my screencast of my, pro of my project. It's also hint a good hint, kind of helpful tip, is to have a newspaper where there's nothing that will annoy you on it so that way you will not be staring at it for hours and hours and keep getting annoyed. So that will go on top of your Lazy Susan. Now to hold down my object I use this lovely stuff which is museum wax and it is very good because unlike blue tack it will not damage the object. I'll give a little demonstration with some disembodied arms of how to place correctly your newspaper and wax onto the Lazy Susan. Now it's very important that you place the wax and ultimately the object in the very center. Thankfully mine because Lazy Susan it has a little metal piece here and it's glass you can see it. It's relatively easy to place it in the center. But if you have a solid one, it's probably best to have a little mark in the exact center. Now the reason you want it in the direct center is because of its relationship to the camera. Now as you see, when I turn it, when it's in the exact center, the object stays in relationship to the camera. But if I move it in any other direction, as it spins, it moves away and towards the camera. This will offset your focus and make it impossible to do the model. And the object I'm doing today is a copper alloy brooch found at a dig in Silchester done by the University of Reading. It is part of our teaching collection now, because this object is so small, and it's almost completely flat, as you can see, the software will not recognize it as a three-dimensional object if it's laying down flat, or even just slightly tilted. To combat this, I'm now making a model of it upright this way, and a model of it upright this way. I call it a flip-flop model, so you do two models either side, and then once in your Agisoft PhotoScan, you can then combine the two models to make a perfect three-dimensional model of the whole object. So to start off, I'm going to place my object standing upright into the wax. And now it's all set to go. The settings I use on this really nice Canon with a fixed 50 millimeter lens is to have a high aperture of 25 as well as a four second exposure. 
The reason it's so long is that you need to have as much light coming in. And you actually do get quite a lot of light coming in with 4 seconds at 25. I also do not use anything higher than a 100 ISO because this will start creating grain the higher the ISO you go, so not on auto. I also have just standard autofocus, standard of um, light metering on RAW. Now with the white balance, we have the fluorescent lights on. So you can either leave it on the auto white balance or you can turn it to the fluorescent setting on the white balance. So my system for focus is actually to keep it on autofocus instead of what you often do is just set the focal length and leave it on manual focus. I prefer to do this because I have bumped the camera in manual and switched by accident the focal length. And this way I just set the initial focus and check to make sure it's fine by zooming in and to make sure that the textures are all good and the light is perfect. And once I've created that initial autofocus, I keep it on autofocus. But I make sure that since it doesn't change the focal length, there's a little white focus box here. And I just make sure it stays on the center of the object. Now if you don't have a touch screen, there are the buttons on the side that can move the focus box around. So now that I've got the focus set and the object set, I'm going to quickly switch it to manual focus, so that way it doesn't change. And I'm going to give myself a hand shot. This way when I go onto the computer and upload my images, I can have an easily recognizable image of where one data set starts and another one begins. So now we start actually taking the photograph. I've actually had experimentation with this, just going through the different methods of doing the photos. And weirdly I found that with the smaller objects you actually need to take more photographs. This is because you really need to get a high texture and surface level as well as the basic form for these objects. A lot of them have very tiny indentations so you need a very high dense cloud in order to get all those details. So that means you need more photos. So I tend to do 12 to 15 photos in rotation all the way around. I You can either do it where you mark on the Lazy Susan or somewhere and have a consistent rotation. For me, I'm pretty good at guessing <laughs> how much each angle is and it turns out fine. So, here we go. Start on an easily recognizable first image. So in this case, it's the front. So it's quite easy to know that is the first image. So you go ahead. And you have very long exposure. And so that's your first image. Then you turn it slightly. and have the next image. Now, I often, in between maybe every three photos or five photos, or even sometimes I do it every single photo, is play, press the play button and zoom in and just double make sure that you have a crisp, crisp clean image because sometimes the paper might move get caught on something and it'll move slightly out of focus. After you do your first rotation, we now have to complete the dome. So when I say dome, we basically raise the camera up. I usually do four levels, so this is the first level. You raise it up, tilt it, raise it up, tilt it. This way you get 
a 360 sort of dome all around the object which will then create a very high render. One little tip I have is that to create consistent levels with the tripod between each model you do hand over fist so just unscrew so this will be your base level with a direct perfect face on of the object and then you'll just do one fist and you tilt it down and get it all centered start your images and do the 12 to 15 and once you've done the 12 to 15 you do another set and another set now once you've done all those images it's also important to do a few overhead shots not that many, 3 to 5 just so you get a good amount of texture on the top which often it can overlook, the software can overlook if it just has vague ideas of what that texture and surface is. One of the main things though with a lot of these brooches, like I have the bow brooch here and a lot of the other ones I've found is that because they often have parts that stick out or are rounded around, it's very important to get under shots because a lot of these will then create holes with the areas it cannot see face on. So I use my little Don't Mess With Texas shot glass and I'll actually put this directly under the object. And make sure it's once again exactly in the center. tilt up the camera to get some up shots. With the up shots, it's very important to get the areas that you would not be able to see with the straight on and do maybe very slight angles on those. So maybe do one here, one here, one here. Very slight, but once you get to the sides you can just do one or two. And then also at the back if there's any nice decoration or something like this one has, it's good to just do a few slight ones as well. Just to get some of the texture and the form off of the back. Now comes the flippity flop of the model making. So I'll remove my Don't Mess With Texas. Remove the newspaper and the wax. Alright, so you remove the object. Now when you remove it there is going to be quite a lot of little bits of wax still sticking to the object and even though you might they look might look really small, you might not notice them, but once you put it on the computer, they will be ginormous. So it's good to get a cleaning cloth. Um, I've actually found an eyeglass cleaning cloth works well because you don't want any fibers that are gonna then stick onto the object and then those will come out on the model. So once you've cleaned it all off, you then flip it around. Press it gently into the wax, and now you have the other side, which then you will now model. And actually, I'm noticing it's very hot out today, and the wax is actually starting to not melt, but soften, and that's one thing to look after, is maybe just remember the temperature. And I've actually found when it starts to soften like this, just put the wax into the fridge for a few hours and that will actually make it a little bit harder if it's really warm out. So now that you've got your other side, what work 
On the other side, you're going to do your model once again, doing all those first steps that we did. So now you have all your images. You do your final hand shot. And now you're good to go to go on to Agisoft PhotoScan. We'll be using Standard to create your model. So check out our next video and see how you complete all this.